To start things off, lads, I must say we three are proper angels and we are known to be angels, but there are different levels and different categories of angels. And I must say, of everyone who I know, I think Andy Schnell probably spends more time per day and per week involved in the Angelina Jordan community more than anyone else that I know. And what he does is so much behind the scenes and he puts in so much work that we want to use this moment and give Andy an opportunity to describe to us all of the detailed benevolent work that he does on behalf of Angelina Jordan. Andy, this podcast cannot be any longer than three days. You do have your limit, okay? <laughs> Well, thank you so much for inviting me for this podcast episode. But to be honest, uh, I'm, I'm rather busy, so I, I think I'll just say goodbye for now. and uh, We'll chat again at a later time. Okay. <laughs> it's a labor of love, as you know, Steve Ackerman titled his channel, uh, AJ Labor of Love. And in my mind, it's, it's time well spent because my intention is to I increase First of all, the exposure for Angelina to introduce her to new people, that is the prime objective. And uh, going along with that is to educate people about Angelina and her music. And that education goes beyond just Angelina and her music. It's, it's an education for me. Uh, I've learned an awful lot since learning of Angelina and becoming an angel. And through that education, I, I try to pass what I've learned on to others. And of course, isn't it true that by spreading the word on Angelina, we're all making the world a little better? Certainly. <laughs> because if we align our goals with Angelina's goals, then we're all working towards that ultimate goal of bringing joy and uh, a little bit, bit more uh, happiness to the world. That is our hope. And I've always said that with all the time and effort that I have spent doing this, if it improved the quality of life for just one person, nearly as much as it's improved the quality of my life, then it's all been worth it. You can't put a price tag on improving the quality of somebody's life. And different people have their life improved in different ways. I hear that over and over again. Someone becomes less introverted. Someone becomes more confident. Someone experiences joy in a different way. Someone becomes more creative. So everyone is getting from Angelina what they need in, uh, in a certain way. And uh, I find that remarkable too. Oh, absolutely. It goes right into the prime objective of introducing Angelina to, to new people. As has been said by myself on my previous podcast episode, as well as other angels who have been on this wonderful podcast, we don't let an opportunity slip by to introduce Angelina to, to somebody. And that all starts really with just a smile when you're out in public and to interact with people and to talk about whatever. It could be the weather. It could be an item at the store where you're shopping. It could be the bank teller. It, whoever you're interacting with is to start with a smile and, and make some small talk to make the person feel comfortable and th that you're presenting yourself in a friendly manner. And then... At some point, you just ask the simple question, what type of music do you enjoy? And then you could just go from there. I, I had a very interesting moment yesterday. I was on a, a professional Zoom conversation with a, a Norwegian doctor. And just ever so casually in conversation, I, I said to her, oh, by the way, I have a YouTube channel about Angelina Jordan. Do you know her? And it, uh, she made me smile because she said, oh, yes, she started as a child and she always sings barefoot. And so it's <laughs> interesting what she particularly remembered and uh, what she pointed out about uh, Angelina. Does she know the reason why? No, I, I don't think. I, I think she just knew two or three superficial facts, but no more than that. My education with Angelina really began once I learned about reaction videos. I had no idea that they existed. In fact, if people go back and watch my first podcast episode, they'll, they'll learn the full story. But basically, prior to learning of Angelina, I would only hop on YouTube once every month or two or three 
to watch some music videos to relax for a little while and get sucked into that rabbit hole of, oh, I'll put in a search, a song that I want to listen to. And then YouTube on the recommendations next to that video, quite often there would be one, oh, oh yeah, I'll watch that one. That, that could be fun. And if, before you know it, a few hours goes by, but I never scrolled down the page to see what was underneath the video. And that's where, of course, were the comments. Once I found and watched my first video to Angelina and found the comments, all the wonderful angels who had great knowledge were willing to share that information. And I just soaked it up like a sponge and then tried to put that information into my own words, leaving my own comments on reaction videos. And that's really how it all began for me. Once you found the common section, uh, all heaven broke loose as opposed to all hell breaking loose. <laughs> yes, that is true. And I would say a, a very important point in time was not too long after Seventh Heaven was released. And it came through the fan club that Angelina's team was not very happy about reaction videos. They felt that the reaction videos were hurting her analytics on YouTube. People would rather watch the reaction videos than to watch wow. the original video over and over. And I got a, a reply to one of my comments from a, a fellow named who goes by uh, Ron R who said that he'd like to have a chat with me. And when I interacted with Ron, it was his suggestion or his thought was to try and get a reactors on reaction channels to better support the artist. And he was looking for me to help him with that campaign. And when we began, there were very few channels that just independently on their own were providing some sort of support for the artists that they were featuring on their reaction video. And Ron and I really started uh, the campaign and, and many other angels helped in the cause uh, after we began it. And nowadays you go on reaction videos and a very large percentage of reaction channels will give some type of support to the featured artist. So we're very proud of that. To go back to your earlier point, Andy, it's one thing to meet a new person and say, oh, I have this wonderful singer I want you to hear. But really in the back of your mind, what you really want to say, but you cannot is, Oh, you should listen to this singer. She has the potential to change your life. <laughs> you, you can't say that because it's too presumptive and uh, it will uh, get you nowhere. And that's a very good point, Alan. And in my early uh, months after learning about Angelina and learning more about her, I was very much the wicked over the top fan. And this is the, the best singer I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> and, and you really ought to listen to her. That doesn't win people over very well. That just comes with time that you learn that each person needs to experience their own journey. Really, all you need to do is to make the introduction. And so I'll say, I really like this new singer, Angelina Jordan, and I hope that she'll check her out. Oh, and by the way, she does always perform barefoot to remind her of the less fortunate children on the planet. And quite often that's about all I'll ever say to, to somebody that I meet in the street or at a store or wherever. I don't know any other artist that has that same kind of uh, appeal to people, but maybe that's just because I, I don't listen to <laughs> too, too much of other artists. But I, I, it would be so interesting to see how large a percentage of people listening to Angelina Jordan is actually having that same sensation that we all three has had that she is changing our life to the better in, in some mysterious way that we can't really put our finger on. How many of the ones that are following her actively fall into that category? Do you, do you have any inkling of that? It, it would just be a, an educated guess that I think the, the majority of Angelina Angels, the ones that have really fallen down the rabbit hole and put her at the top of their playlist would be, be pretty well versed in her story. I have to say, but personally, it took me uh, many months. It's, it's not like it happened overnight that I became such a huge fan or really understood what Angelina and her music, what the impact was on. And it really wasn't until Million Miles 
when that was released. And that was about eight or nine months after I learned about her that I, I really fully understood that she was affecting me emotionally at a very high level. For those first eight months of listening to her, I was just so intrigued by the quality of her music and the fact that she was so young, it was just very intriguing to me and I enjoyed listening to it. And she obviously had such a large catalog. There was so much to watch and, and listen to, but it wasn't until Million Miles when, when she made me cry <laughs> that it all started to make sense to me and understand just how much her music meant to me on an emotional level. So we can't expect others to reach that point in a short time frame either. Yeah, there are some at first listen, they'll start crying. We've seen that with a few reactors, but those are few and far between. It's different for each person. And it's difficult to get somebody to put a new artist at the top of their playlist. Oh, yeah, she's very good. I like her just as much as I like dozens of other artists and yeah, I'll put her on my playlist, but she'll get equal billing with dozens of others. And that's, I think where most people uh, w would fit into that category. I saw a clip from Nina Schofield, actually the first video she saw of Angelina. She said something to the effect that this is not an artist you say, oh, she's very good. Now I go and listen to something else. Oh no, this is an artist where you go and you say, oh, this person is special. I need to hear everything she ever recorded. <laughs> I think that's what a great singer does is they invite you to watch more, not to listen and go, yeah, that was good. And okay, what, what, what can I listen to now? No, no, they make you go, ah, okay, you have something special. I need to listen to every single thing you've ever sung which I find uh, really remarkable that as a voice coach uh, say such a remarkable statement on the first listen. But that tells how special she is. One of the things Pontus and I have tried to do with this podcast is to answer the mysterious question, why are we feeling like this? How are we feeling like this? What is going on? And I, I'm not sure that there is an answer. There are just theories about what is going on. And it occurred to me just recently, about a week ago, that there are two separate things that Angelina Jordan has said. One, she has said that she wants to sing for the world. And two, she also wants to spread love. Now, we look at these two statements and we consider them to be separate statements. But if you combine those two statements, then you get something like, I want to sing for the world and spread love. And that actually is what she is doing. And with her technique, and don't ask me how, she is actually generating something like love. And different people experience love in different ways and people get over emotional and they, they have tears. But she is actually able to generate love when she sings in a lot of people for however love might feel to them. Yes, that's a wonderful point, Ellen. And it is, it is that love that I feel that inspires me on a daily basis and multiple times each day, because every time I listen to Angelina sing, it's an inspiration for me to try and do better. And better in my book is to try to increase the quality of life for other people by spreading this message. And I think it really hit home with the Nobel Peace Prize performance and learning all the background that went along with it, that the recipient, Nargis Mohammadi, was in prison in Iran and her two twin children were the same age as Angelina. And it had been a long time since her children had, had seen their mother and they're living in France while she's in prison in Iran. And of course we know Angelina's uh, grandmother, Mary is Iranian. And we could only uh, imagine the conversations that Angelina had with both her mother and grandmother about Nargis and, and the situation there. And most of the performers on that tribute for the Nobel Peace Prize were Iranian artists. And you really need that context to put that performance in its proper perspective. And it's very sad to watch so many reaction videos where the reactor 
has no background for the performance because Unchained Melody is noted as a song to really belt out the high notes and be very impressive with those very powerful notes during the song. And some reactors have been somewhat disappointed that Angelina seemed reserved in, in her performance. But once you know the background, it w wasn't about Angelina at all. She didn't want any focus on her. Her message was to feel the love for Nargis and her children and for the Iranian people and for the rights of women in Iran and all, all these other very important issues. Her performance was all about the love for all of that. Oh, my love, my darling, I've hungered for your time. There's something else which struck me because sometimes when you watch a home video or a TikTok performance, uh, Angelina Jordan speaking, some people have reacted and said, wow, she may be a phenomenal singer, but she's just an ordinary teenager. And they say that almost as if that takes some of the shine off of who Angelina Jordan is. But I see it as completely the opposite. For me, it's actually symbolic because if Angelina Jordan is an ordinary teenager with a super extraordinary talent, maybe that actually is a lesson for all of us. So that each one of us, however ordinary our life is and however ordinary we may seem to other people or even to ourselves, maybe somewhere we have some type of super talent that is latent and it is there and we just have to find it and bring it out and have the right circumstances for it to shine yeah i, I think that's a, a very good point alan and i think that's also uh, one of the reasons that uh, at least for me that i get so affected when listening to her is because i somewhere in the back of my mind i just realize how beautiful we are as human beings and that kind of insight is very important to have with you at all times that this is a miracle that we're living and we should make the best of it this is all a variation of spreading love and feeling love and having a vision of love constantly without interruption it's all a variation of the same thing. We're, we're in a very difficult period around the globe in recent years. It's not unprecedented. If you know anything about history, there have been a very troublesome times uh, very often throughout history. In this technological age, one thing that's really bothersome is that people don't really have much faith in what people call facts. Uh, factual information is, is often blurred nowadays to confuse people. And it's very difficult. It's hard enough to raise a family and go to work and do all the things that it takes in order to uh, have a, a decent quality of life. And I, I think Angelina's simple message of being kind to one another and to spread love is really the right solution really for everybody. If you really hold that dear and close to your heart and only really use your own personal experience that, gee, I, I really like this person. We seem to get along well. We're very friendly with one another. Uh, whereas another person you might run across, there is, there is some friction and confrontation. You can use those personal experiences to make a judgment about people. You shouldn't be listening to others tell you who you should love and who you should hate. People need to bring things back to their own core personal value. And, and the most personal value, of course, is love. It's one thing to hear the word spread love, and especially if you hear it from a young person. But I think it's such a rich subject, and I think it is not a waste of our time to elaborate on that, to discuss what that can possibly mean. And one very simple way to understand what it means to spread love is what can i do to make someone else happy and if you start with something as simple and as straightforward as that 
and you, ha you have it in your consciousness 24 7. It is a permanent fixture of how you v view and deal with people in your world, then I think that's a good place to start. Totally agree. And once you get in the habit of always thinking about light in those terms, then it opens up many doors. Like I just complained or made an observation about reactors and doing their reaction videos. And I know full well how much time and effort it takes to make those reaction videos. And I don't know, for whatever reason, people get into doing such a thing, whether they think they're going to get rich or whatever. And, and I know that's not the case. It, they don't make a lot of money from their videos. And I really do appreciate all the time and effort that they put in. But I think they should also have the mindset that they, they should always be looking to improve on, on their videos. And uh, the solution that I just came up with, especially as a result of the Nobel Peace Prize performance, is that reactors uh, could take just two or three minutes to go to the original video that they're about to react to, scan through the comments underneath that original video, and look for a couple comments that give some background for this performance that they're about to react to. That puts things in a much better context and they mix for a much better reaction video. But this is probably my next campaign on YouTube is to offer that suggestion to reaction channels. They have to understand I'm trying to help them as best I can. I'm, I don't want to criticize them because I know how much time and effort it takes, but I'm good at making observations and I can offer suggestions to improve the quality of their video. I still spend a fair amount of time listening to other artists besides Angelina, because another way that I get to introduce Angelina to a large group of people is by attending live streams on YouTube, where a reaction channel is having a live stream and people make requests, whether you have to pay a couple dollars for the request or the request is free. E either way, uh, you have a captive audience who are attending that live stream. And of course, while I'm waiting for my Angelina request to be played, I am exposed and, and listen to other artists. And I appreciate that because you never know. Uh, I, I, I might find an, another uh, artist that I would enjoy as much as Angelina. Uh, I would say it's not very likely, uh, but there's no harm in looking. I had an interesting moment last week because we were visiting some relatives in France and we were just talking and they know that I have an Angelina Jordan channel and we were talking and I was about to play them Angelina's performance of Bohemian Rhapsody and my relative, she's around 40 years old, she said, oh, I really like Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody. I said, oh, you'll find this very interesting, this performance. So I played her Angelina's performance and all she said at the end was, I still prefer Queen's original performance. <laughs> End of conversation. I think that's also one of the things that have surprised me, or not surprised, but that I find very fascinating is the community around Angelina is very, in the way that Angelina wants them to be, of course, very kind to one another. And as soon as there is somebody that steps out of line, People are very fast to gently but firmly correcting them and saying that uh, you shouldn't talk like that uh, because that's not the way that Angelina would like you to respond to some haters or something. And I think that is also something that I, I myself have found very useful in my life since discovering and listening to Angelina. I look upon people that could be not so very nice to be around. I see them in a different light these days. I see them more as they are having difficulties in their life. They are not very happy people. And what can I do to make yeah. that a little bit more uh, interesting for them? To have a little bit more perspective on life, perhaps. Uh, and not being disrespectful in any way, just uh, being prepared that this will just run off them. Very, very glad you brought up that point, Pontus, because when I first started watching reaction videos to Angelina, uh, there were far fewer of them. And certainly uh, Rusty Shackelford was the lead angel. And he was the one in the way that he would respond to negative comments was a great mentor. 
Sadly, Rusty has chosen to fade away from the scene, but he did a lot of great work. He is certainly a very important chapter in the Angelina Angel story, and he never certainly desired to be more of a public figure like I am here on a podcast episode, but that's his choice. But just what he did through his comments on reaction videos have great respect for, and he certainly taught me an, an awful lot. It's an evolution. I'm sure there are many other wonderful angels out there who write great comments. They're terrific writers, and uh, hmm. I applaud all of them. And also, going back to Pontus's point about the negative comments and how angels respond to them, I ask all angels to be on the lookout for negative comments and to respond to them in a respectful way. Because there are so many reaction videos. So that's one thing I truly miss is I don't read as many comments as I used to because there's just far too many. There aren't enough hours in the day. So it really needs to be a community effort amongst all the angels to really police the comment section. I find the Angelina Jordan community to be very gentle and very tolerant. I probably have had 5,000 comments to my videos and I maybe only have had one or two which have been negative. Consistently, the Angelina Jordan community has really taken the lead from Angelina and has understood that the high moral ground is much preferred and it doesn't take that much effort or insight to be really pleasant and nice. Mm, that's true. Another aspect, I, I heard you, Andy, say that uh, you were talking about different chapters in the history of the community. And I think we're in a coming chapter now, just beginning to evolve, and that is the cooperation between the different angels and the creativity being really very surprisingly highly sophisticated creativity initiatives being done and people coming together in different groups and everybody just really enjoying themselves <laughs> and doing stuff like they they never should have done if they hadn't being a fan of Angelina, I think. Richard, who's a relatively new angel, he was on the podcast a, a few weeks ago. His key mission is to bring people together, especially through the Angelina Jordan community. And he spends hours and hours every day with that goal in mind and very, very creatively. And it's part of the wonder and fun of being part of the Angelina Jordan community. We're almost like a collective brethren. Yeah, no, there's certainly some very talented people and the number of uh, YouTube channels that are dedicated to Angelina is crazy. It's, it's truly remarkable. Some of them are not as obvious as others. Uh, maybe they just make playlists of, of Angelina songs or turn TikToks and, and Instagram videos into YouTube videos. But there's quite a few uh, channels and, and that's all their choice of how they want to help and spread the message. And it's not just on YouTube. There's also in the fan groups on Facebook, for instance, there are individuals that take very good care of all the statistics of Angelina's songs and how many views and are constantly updating them. And it's really remarkable that the kind of effort that people is. I'm glad you mentioned that, Pontus, because I want to give them a shout out to everybody who spends a lot of time and effort on the other social media outside of YouTube to help support Angelina. I salute them. I wish I could spend more time with my preference has always been YouTube. Never did any social media until I found Angelina and became a YouTuber. And now on Facebook, at least enough to visit the fan clubs or, or to watch her videos on Instagram and, and TikTok. But I, I don't spend much time there. And then another suggestion that I have for people, especially reactors who want to interact with their viewers and their patrons if they have patrons is far too often their communication is spread amongst too many different platforms and it's very hard for me as a patreon or just a viewer of a reaction channel to just have an exchange of a couple comments because i don't know which platform they prefer so my suggestion to these people is to choose one or two platforms that you will check and read your messages on a daily basis. And that will also increase 
the quality of your YouTube channel just by being able to interact with those who want to interact with you. Good advice. It, it's strange because if Angelina Jordan does in the next year or two catch on worldwide the way she deserves, events will overtake us and there will be so many millions of angels. I wonder if and how we original angels will be left behind. Maybe there'll be a, a regular podcast about Angelina on NBC television every week beamed across America or Norway. <laughs> In other words, uh, it, it, when, once the media properly get a hold of the Angelina Jordan phenomena, Pontus, you and I might be out of a job with this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so too. Yeah. <laughs> to, to think a little bit about the future, because I feel that uh, there are not very many of her concerts and they're months apart, but Still, each concert is really like a gathering of people and it's like meeting other fans is almost as a big an experience as uh, listening to Angelina Jordan sing because it, there's so much uh, exchange going on yeah, yeah. Uh, in the concerts. That's really fascinating. I, th I think we have to use the P word going to Angelina Jordan's concerts are really a pilgrimage. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, I have a suggestion. I had sent you three video clips. I chose them because it shows the message that Angelina has remained with. It starts at, at age six with meeting the uh, the orphan girl and, and her diary entry. And then after uh, winning Norway's Got Talent at age eight and what she intended to do with her prize money, which, by the way, got put in a trust, which uh, now becomes available now that she's going to turn 18. So I wonder if she'll relate to that information to us as to what she'll end up doing with the Norway Scott Talent prize money. And then finally, with the 2022 concert in, in Norway with her introduction to Suspicious Minds. And it just goes to show that she has remained true to her message. And uh, I, I think that would be a nice yeah. little addition to, to this podcast start with the interview with Ann Linmo. Yes, because that takes us back to age six, because that's when she wrote in her diary about her encounter with the orphan girl. Verden er veldig rar. Akkurat der og da følte jeg at døren i hjertet åpnet seg, og at det ble fylt med masse lys. Det var som det fantes fra jord til himmel en trapp. Jeg klatret opp trappene. Det å kunne gjøre noe for et annet menneske var så stort, vanskelig å si akkurat. It's, it's just truly remarkable. That encounter with the orphan girl was when Angelina was six, and at a later time she wrote that in her journal, and it's just remarkable, first off, that a six-year-old would, would be writing a journal and writing in script, but far more importantly was the message and the empathy that she has. And of course, uh, it says a lot for her family and how they brought her up, but there can be no doubt a six-year-old Angelina or nine-year-old Angelina reading out of her journal there, she knows what charity is and she's very sincere with her message. If Angelina Jordan course is ever taught at university, that clip should be one of the things which are shown. But that same clip also could be shown in a child development class or it could even be shown in a philosophy class. That one clip could just explode in so many different directions. Yep, quite true. Yeah, and the next clip that we'll watch is, is only 72 seconds long. And halfway through, she gets asked what she would like to do with the prize money that she just won on Norway's Got Talent. Angelina is eight. And we'll see how she answers the question of what she'd like to do with the half a million kroner, which at the time was roughly 80,000 US dollars. Sommerferien din, den blir vel litt annerledes i år enn det den har vært før. Hva er det du gleder deg mest til? Ja, masse konserter. I kveld for tantans på brygga. Hva er det som blir aller morsomst i sommer da? Uh, kose hos og synge masse. Har du brukt noen av premiepengene enda? Nei, den blir forvaltes av fylkesmannen. Hva vil du bruke dem til da? 
Ja, vi brukar det till barna som är er alene och har inte sko och kläder. Och jag ska göra dem glad och så ska jag synge dem. För jag ska synge för dem. När är er det du hoppar att göra detta då? För alltid. Men det var en god plan. Det var hyggligt bruk av pengarna då. Ja. Så ska jag köpa dig en ponny. Eller en bil. You can almost see her thinking there. A car? What kind of stupid question is that? <laughs> This is where I insert a little bit of the video from Love Don't Let Me Go. <laughs> yeah, the, the Porsche. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. In some instances, she's a very mature child. And in some instances, she's not. For her to say that she's going to do this forever and support the less fortunate. People would say, oh, she's eight years old. It's the child speaking and it speaks well to her parents with the upbringing. Will she carry that forward into her life? So the next clip is at the concert in Norway in 2022 with her introduction to Suspicious Minds. And so we will see if at age 16, if she's still carrying the same message. quick little message dedicated to all of you is that you know with this song I just want to say that please be kind to each other and just spread love uh, that's what we need more in this world um, and I just <laughs> I get so emotional <laughs> staying up standing on this stage <laughs> Me. Oh. <laughs> I love you guys. That you got, you know, you guys took the time to come um, see me. <laughs> it truly means the world to me, and it just pushes me harder to work even, even better, and just just be better and better. Um, and I love you all. <laughs> She's so gracious. Yeah, she's so sincere. She's so humble. And I truly believe what inspires her to work harder and to get better and better is, yes, it is for her angels, but even more, it's so that she will be able to spread her message of being kind to one another and to spread love amongst uh, each other to spread that message further and further. I truly think that's at the heart of it. Let's hope the message of spreading love is the main thing that people remember from this podcast, Andy. That is the takeaway. And be inspired. Follow Angelina's lead. Work harder. Be creative. By all means, don't follow somebody else. Try and think of ways to go about accomplishing something in your own unique way. In that way, you're really providing something sincere from your heart that's unique to you. And boy, if more people could do that, the whole world becomes a whole lot richer. And so I think that's the main takeaway. Andy, you've really proved your credentials as a super fan by doubling down on the messages of Angelina. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Thank you so much. And also, the, the one other thing is a quick little ad for raising money for the Dolly Parton Imagination Library by offering up the pins that I handed out at the Portsmouth concert, which I like to think are going to be quite a collector's item for Angelina's first public concert in the United States so that we can raise more money. It's what uh, the Imagination Library is that Dolly Parton began, uh, but each local library, and I've stopped by my local library to learn that they do participate. 
they are responsible for raising their own funds to purchase books. Whereas the foundation itself works with the publishing companies to get the books at a much reduced cost. And anybody who has a child can register their child with the Dolly Parton Imagination Library right after the child's birth. And that child will receive a free book once a month until their fifth birthday with the hope that their parents will read each book to their children as they grow. And they say on their website that they estimate 10% of the children under the age of five in the United States are participating in this imagination library. And so I think it's a very worthwhile charity. And I really hope that once Angelina's book Between Two Hearts becomes available in English version, that uh, the Dolly Parton Imagination Library will look to distribute that book as well, which would really be truly amazing. I'm offering up the pin, yep, put this in the right spot, that I gave out at the Portsmouth concert, which was Angelina's first public concert in the United States. And for a donation to the Dolly Parton Imagination Library, I will mail the donator a pin with a thank you card. I had a few hundred pins left over after the concert, and I couldn't think of a better way of putting them to good use. Thank you, Andy. Thank you so much. Yeah. As, as always, it's been a pleasure.